Hello, I'm Charles Severance and welcome to the second half of our Getting Started Welcome Lecture where I talk a little bit about how the course is going to run and how things will be graded, etc. Um, so this is part of a course I teach on campus at the University of Michigan called SI502 Networked Computing and it's actually uh, kind of between uh, chapters 11 and 12 of a book I teach on Python. Uh, you can see the rest of the course at www.pythonlearn.com where all my lectures from that class, the slides, the audio, and the recorded materials are available from that course as well. But I teach this right in between. It's kind of a break from programming. I teach a couple of weeks of, uh, of internet history and I've expanded it uh, in, this, uh, in this course. And so my goal was uh, I wanted a course that was kind of a low stakes course. There's a, a lot of really sophisticated courses on Coursera, junior level computer science classes. I wanted a class that kind of brought a lot of people in and taught us something together and got us used to this new form of education. And I, so I picked a really interesting topic in internet history, technology, and security that I, I think everybody should know something about. So how to like work with this software, how to behave in online communities, how to meet people, how, how to get grades, how to do peer grading. This is all kind of foreign to some of us. And so I wanted a course that we could really learn about the how to use this new environment to learn. And so it's, uh, it's, I wanted a, something we could all really enjoy working with. Um, I, I approach this course much like I approach my involvement in open source software like the Sakai community or the Moodle community. Um, it works when there's kind of a guide, but the guide's not really ever in charge. So I'm really not in charge of this class. I'll make some decisions, um, but it really is your class. And I want you to take control. I want you to answer questions. I want you to help each other. Uh, frankly, if we all wait for me, um, there's not much, you're not going to learn much if you let it all be on me. You've got you to gotta learn from each other and help each other learn. Uh, lectures are a big part of it. Uh, some people would say, oh, lectures are bad. I still think they're fine as long as they're interesting and don't waste your time. Um, I give you the notes in PowerPoint and PDF. Um, my slides are Creative Commons attribution, so you can make use of them, you can remix them, you can change them, you can use parts of them. I really want you to teach classes yourself. Most of the videos are up on YouTube. Uh, the lecture, my bits of the lecture videos are not up on YouTube yet, but I may put them up later. Um, and some of the videos have articles that I've gotten gracious permission from my Tripoli Computer Magazine to, uh, to share with you, and that's really cool. So online in the Coursera software, there is a syllabus for the course duration and topic. And I, don't, I won't repeat it here. You can go look at that yourself. I'm, I'm thinking that this is going to take you three to four hours a week. I've, I've spread it out a little bit so that we're not sort of doing 10 or 20 hours a week because I think that's a lot of work for you. And I want you to enjoy it. I want you to think about it. I want you to sort of look at the material and then it's kind of expand on it in your mind and with your other students. Um, I wanted to make it so that people can join for the first couple of weeks and still earn all the points. So uh, if you like the first couple of lectures, bring your friends. But at some point I will uh, shut down further enrollments. I don't like it when somebody comes, you know, nine weeks into a 11 week class and says, hey, I just found out about this course and I want to take all the assignments and get 100% and it's, it sort of disrespects the work of the people who joined at the beginning and been in the course all along. And so. So there, there's a lecture video archive that you people will be able to see, and they're welcome to it. But I really want the course to be about the people who are involved in the course and going through the material together. I think the social aspect of learning is one of the beautiful things of these large online courses. Uh, so if you have friends, bring them. Bring them fast. You know, I don't, don't expect that five to six weeks in that they'll be able to join the course. So the uh, discussion forum is a place for us all to get together and do work. There's a number of different topics like the general discussion, lectures, how to forming study groups. You can the instructional staff questions is kind of stuff I or or my colleagues monitor. Um, platform feedback is something that Coursera monitors, and so these are places for you to post and get answers. Um, you are from all over the world. This is a visualization of about uh, 4,700 of the students in my first class had. Over, almost 50,000 students in it, but this is 4,700 and it's all over the world, all very much coverage. Um, and you taking this class are similar. And I have the great fortune uh, to have quite a travel schedule. 
And so this uh, form of lecture recording, I use it even in my online classes at times. And I visited with Coursera students uh, around the world, New York, Los Angeles, Ann Arbor, Wilmington, North Carolina, Chicago, Washington, D.C., Memphis, Tennessee, Seattle, Washington, Seoul, Korea, Barcelona, Spain, London, Amsterdam, and Manila, Philippines. And, and I'll share the videos that I took of each of these things. I really love talking to students face-to-face. -face. Unfortunately, I can't talk to everyone face-to-face, -face, but I like having these little meetups and, and, and going to meetups when I'm traveling somewhere. And so I'll be announcing throughout the class when I'm going to be somewhere if there, we want to have a meetup. And uh, usually I do it, as you can see, kind of at a Starbucks and people show up and we talk and mostly we don't talk about the class. We talk about like philosophy of online learning and stuff like that. And it's really wonderful to meet people uh, in this class from around the world. I really enjoy teaching this kind of a class because as we design the class, we are encouraged to think about assessments very differently than we think about for our online classes. And online class, I mean, for our on-campus classes. For our on-campus class, um, you know, I, I got to come up with grades. I got to give A pluses and A's and A minuses and B pluses. And students say, how come I got an A minus and not an A? And I'm going to like, oh, look at these half points that you lost. So we create assessments that really sort of sort people and rank people. It's not the way I've done the assessments. They encourage us to make the assessments be something that enhances learning. Don't worry so much about measurement. So like you'll see in video questions, I mean, I don't, I put those in only when I think they're useful and it'll help your learning. I'm not trying to like give you a bunch of points for you to lose. We'll do one quiz a week. It'll be 10 points each. Uh, you can take it as many times as you like. It's random, but sooner or later you will figure out all the questions that I've come up with. And you can get a 10 if, out of 10 if you work hard enough. Again, the goal is not so much the grade, the numeric grade. The goal is, is if you do that, hopefully you're learning some of the material. And so I don't come up with questions that are designed to trick you, but I do come up with questions at times that I think will help you learn the material. We'll have a final exam and <clears throat> it'll have some points. And then we have some extra credit. Uh, peer graded writing assignments, 10 points each. We'll have th uh, three of those um, and uh, there'll be extra credit. So peer grading is something that in various classes that uh, students are happy, some students are happy and some students are not happy. So I made the decision to count the peer grading as all extra credit and you do not have to do the peer grading. Um, but there are other students that just love the peer grading because it's another way to become very social. Um, it's graded by your fellow students. You get comments from your fellow students. Some of the comments from fellow students aren't too helpful, but others are wonderfully helpful. And so, yeah, your grade is calculated by other students. Usually it's five or so other students grade your work and we average what they say and that's your grade. Um, I'm not going to regrade these, right? I'm not going to, I mean, I know what it feels like personally to like have somebody criticize something, especially somebody you don't even know who they are. And you say like, oh, they're, they're, they're wrong and they marked me off. And it's like, I'm not going to regrade 50,000 papers um, because somebody disagreed with what one raider said and you got an 8.5 instead of a 10. And you know, you probably you're right, right? I mean, but at the end of the day, we're not going to nickel and dime on points. And so when you write, understand that you're writing for your peers. You're writing for people that might be critical. You're trying to write for understanding. Um, and you don't get to appeal for me, to me as a sort of a, if you don't like the grade you got, I'm not gonna regrade these things. The way I'm gonna score the course is I'm gonna calculate a percentage. And so the way it's gonna work is I'm gonna add up the total points you get for the assignments, 10, 10 points a week, uh, the total points for the exam, and then the total extra credit. And then I'll divide that by merely the total assignments plus the exam because the extra credit is extra credit. And so for example, if there's you got seven assignments and you got 10 points and you got a 30 on the exam, three uh, extra credit assignments at 10 points, you add all this together, so that's 130. And then the denominator is 100. So you got 130%, that'd be 130% in this particular example. And 75% is the, the score, the cutoff score. And if you, if you look at it, it's calculated so that you can't ignore the extra credit, right? You do not need the extra credit to get 75%. Now, I want to just be as clear as I can possibly be. With 50,000 students, you're not going to come and say, you know what, I had a vacation and I couldn't do the homework. Could I get a special deal? Could I get a special extension on the assignment? I'm not going to do that, okay? With 50,000 people, 
you know, they, it's not like you're taking it for credit. I'm not going to regrade them. I'm not going to give custom extensions. I may do something for the whole class, but I'm not going to do anything for individual students. So don't let your score be 74.9%, right? Don't do that. Don't come to me and say, man, I'm so close. I worked so hard in this class and got a 74.9%. Get like 80% or 100% or 105%. I'm going to be calculating rather strictly. And you may come, if you're close and you want to complain, I'm, I'm not going to regrade, okay? Just to make that clear, don't make it close. Don't try to do this just by the skin of your teeth. It's a cutoff. Be way above it if you really want a certificate. If you just want to learn the stuff in the class, well, then don't take the point seriously, and that's okay. I hope I'm making myself clear. I want you to succeed in this, but I'm also not going to give you special things because you had a vacation planned or something like that. It's, it's not going to be like that. You are going to have to teach each other this material. You're going to have to help each other. If there's a misunderstanding, ask a question in the forum, and the most likely person to answer that question is another student in the class, not me. Don't wait for me. Answer them. I come through and I'll find things and I'll say, yep, that was a great answer. Thank you so very much. So I like that. And I like it when students answer questions and I like to help or support that kind of activity. Um, you know, ask questions about the quizzes. Don't worry so much about like if you're like, you know, you don't necessarily just put the questions and answers up, but say, you know, on that, you know, question three, when it's asking about X, Y, and Z, and answer C is such and so, it doesn't make sense to me. That's okay. It's okay. I mean, because people can get a perfect score on the quiz just by repeated guessing if they want. So I more lean towards doing things that cause you to learn more. What would make you learn more? If you talk, at least in general terms, about what the question is asking, and then people start talking back to you, then everyone's learning about the topic that I want you to learn about. Okay? So it's, don't, don't think of the quiz as a secret. Don't just put the questions and answers up, but don't think of them as like, deep, dark, secret material. We're all here to learn. In a class like this, especially with lots of different cultures, uh, plagiarism often comes up, especially in writing assignments. Um, uh, because, you know, I might ask a general question like, you know, what is blah? You know, maybe on an exam. And someone will just go type what is blah into, into Google and find a Wikipedia article and cut and paste the Wikipedia article in. And, you know, the logic would then be, it has to be right. If Wikipedia wrote it, it has to be right. Well, that's called plagiarism. Plagiarism is when you put somebody else's writing, even if it's you know free and reusable, if you put someone else's writing in without acknowledgement, that's plagiarism, okay? And so in the plagiarism is gonna come up most often in the peer graded assignments. And so what we do is we give the graders the option to see plagiarism. I'm not telling them they gotta look for it, but if it's obvious, and as a teacher, usually plagiarism is very obvious because you, you often see words written in a voice that the student doesn't have in the rest of their material. And it's like, well, wait a sec, where did these words come from? And then you check and they're taken right out of Wikipedia or something. So the students can take, uh, take up to half or all the points away. Now that's one in five students, but if all, the, all your graders, all five, they can take all the points away. And I will not regrade them. You can... You, uh, the, the, you're writing for your fellow students in the peer grading. You're not writing for me. You're writing for your fellow students. And if your fellow students say that you had plagiarism, then maybe you should write differently. Maybe they're not right. I mean, I'm not saying they're right. Just because they say it, they could be wrong. What I'm saying is I'm not going to regrade and I'm not going to chase down everybody who has sort of misgraded something. And Okay. So, plagiarism is not allowed. You can put quotes inside your writing. You must attribute those quotes. If you put quotes in that you don't attribute, that takes points off. If your entire answer is something just pasted in, don't waste your time. We will take all the points off. The graders will easily catch if you're simply pasting, pasting a Wikipedia article in as the answer to a writing question. You're taking this course under an honor code you are doing the work yourself. Now, we tell you to ask questions about, you know, how to get help on a quiz or if you're not understanding it. That's not really the problem. The, the honor code is about when you're actually finally taking that quiz, it's really you. And you're not just handing your laptop to somebody else and having them take it. And so you're agreeing to take the examinations and the quizzes as yourself 
even though on some of the quizzes in, indeed you are you know asking questions as you're working through them and then based on those questions you might change your answers and that's okay and so I'll be real clear when I talk about the honor code in the final exam I'm the most strict about the honor code right because in the quizzes I expect you to ask questions so you, you can discuss it in quizzes but don't have someone else take the quiz for you it's not practical for me to answer email for all the students in this class um, I do monitor. There are other people that monitor. There are community TAs that monitor. Um, <clears throat> if there's a problem, it actually usually surprisingly quickly comes to my attention. Um, students themselves become natural leaders. Um, there's a forum where I monitor more than the rest of the, of, of the forum area. <coughs> the, instructional, the instructional staff forum. So, you know, if you see a problem, post it there. Another great way to get a hold of me is Twitter. I'm always on Twitter, even if I'm traveling, I'm on Twitter. And if you say, you know, at Dr. Chuck, you know, you better go into forum XYZ and put the URL in and say that in Twitter, chances are good I will see that, unless I'm right in the middle of a meeting or on an airplane or sleeping, I'll see that in less than 10 minutes and I will be able to react very quickly. Um, and so qu Twitter is probably the best way to get a hold of me. Bring your friends, as I said, for the first few weeks, I'll have open enrollment and I will extend the deadlines for the first few weeks assignments, not because I want you to procrastinate, but because I do want, we see quite a bit of people that on after the first day starts and people start seeing it, they tell their friends to join. And we want that and I think that'll be cool and that gives you somebody to meet with, uh, somebody to study with and somebody to help you. So take it with somebody that you know. As long as it's the first couple of weeks, they'll still be able to get full credit, earn a certificate, you know, and but they can't wait too long. So if you're gonna bring your friends, bring them early. Uh, the students sometimes set up Facebook groups. If students tell me about a Facebook group, I, I tend not to run these Facebook groups, but I will promote them. And if students make a Facebook group or any other kind of a social thing where they want to invite the entire class to join, then I'm happy to uh, promote that as well. Um, as I mentioned, uh, this is part of a larger effort that I teach. Uh, it's part of a programming uh, class, very basic very beginning programming class called uh, Python for Informatics and I've got all the materials for that class so if you want to like bookend uh, or, or, or perhaps go on after this you can take a look at my online class that I have uh, at pythonlearn.com and so this whole thing is still very beginning you know we're getting better at it as we teach you know it's uh, over a year old now and uh, but it's still evolving uh, dive in help each other don't sit on the sidelines do things it's a uh, we're learning how to learn socially and learn together and I think that's probably the most exciting thing about this movement that we're part of. And we're going to learn about history, technology, and security and it's a fascinating thing and we're going to learn a lot and take some quizzes but it's really about helping each other and so I really want to encourage that. I need to thank IEEE Computer Magazine for allowing me to use their copyrighted materials uh, in this class that relate to the class. Uh, Richard Wiggins, uh, who is the co-host of the television show that some of this came from, uh, he's graciously allowed me to use his material. And uh, the folks at Open Michigan, at the University of Michigan, have w gone through and done copyright clearance on my slides to make sure that I either own all the material or I have proper attribution of all the material so that when I hand it to you, it's, it's, the copyright is relatively clean. And so uh, a big part of this course for me is open content. And you'll notice that you can download the audio, the videos, you can download the slides, you download the slides in PowerPoint, which means that you can modify them. I would be honored if you remix this material or adapted all or part of the material. Uh, some of the YouTube videos have copyrights on them, but they're up and they're freely available, so you could use those as well. Um, and so I will uh, make available all the materials uh, kind of grouped together in a way that you can download them all if you want to be a teacher. I mean, if you are a teacher and you want to make use of this material. So I really, I think that's an important part of this is the open content in addition to open enrollment uh, that really is going to make these courses exciting so that you, as a, if you become a teacher or are a teacher, you can use this experience to enhance your own teaching. And that, that's one thing that really excites me about the, the forum that we're being part of. So that's, uh, that's the end of my second half of my introduction. And... Uh, up next, we're going to get started on the history and go back to about World War II when computing, electronic computing and computation really began. See you in a bit.